Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, a big welcome along to this, our special harvest, harvest Thanksgiving service. And if you're visiting with us this morning, uh, you're especially welcome. And then on your behalf, I'd like to welcome the Reverend Alistair McNeely, who's bringing God's word to us this morning. Alistair, you're very welcome again. Uh, all youth organisations meeting this week uh, as arranged. And then our special harvest Thanksgiving evening service uh, will be tonight at 6.30. And uh, Jeff Gone will be bringing God's word there and there'll be supper, supper afterwards. Then the midweek meeting is in Kinigo at 8 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, and Cecil Brown Lee is speaking at the midweek. Then uh, a big thank you to everyone who took gift cards for the Awake Ministries Christmas Appeal. And the empty shoe boxes will be available today to be returned on the 3rd of November. And then also a big thank you to everyone who had any part at all in decorating the church. It really does look fantastic uh, and a big well done there. And then finally, uh, the children's church will be down in the, in the church hall today. And then the creche is back into the uh, choir room. So Kresh is in the choir room and then Children's Church down in the church hall. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you for your, for your welcome. It's good to be back with you um, as we worship God and thank him for uh, the provision of uh, the harvest. Uh, I meant to ask Jim, is, is Jim in the house? He was there. Oh, you're singing? I didn't know you could sing, Jim. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, I've heard you sing and you, you, you can't sing. No, 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 no. Yeah. Have we got the call figure, the, the call form today? Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you didn't get a chance to sign the, the call form on the night when we called Andrew, you have an opportunity to do so today. You don't need to be a, a voting member or even a communicant member. You can be an adhered member and sign it. So it would be good if we could have as many people signing it as possible. They are, there's the man's got it. Um, it would be good if we signed this, that uh, uh, before you leave today. Technically, we've still got next week, but it would be nice to get it tidied up today, if possible. So those are the, uh, all the announcements we want to make. So we, we worship God, and we're, we're here uh, to give uh, thanks to God uh, for his grace and goodness. Our call to worship is from uh, Psalm 92. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord. How profound your thoughts. We don't have... Um, Ten string lyres or harps, but we've got lots of musical uh, uh, instruments, and we've also got our voices, and we want to raise our voices in praise to our God uh, as we give thanks to Him. Let's stand and sing Fair Wave the Golden Corn.
We ran out of words. We ran out of words. <laughs> but that was good to keep going. Well recovered there, I have to say. Well recovered. Um, let's um, pray together. Oh, gracious, generous Father, <clears throat> we worship you and we thank you. We thank you for everything, everything that you are and everything that you give, your, your sovereign rule, your providential care, your revelation to us in, in the Word, your revelation to us in the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in a special way today, we thank you for the necessities and luxuries of life that we enjoy, every single thing given by you, all of it given from your hand, all of it given for our good, so that we might enjoy them and that also we might share them with others so that we might glorify your name through them. Uh, we also are reminded today that we are made in your image, and we know this means so much, but of all the things that this means today, we thank you that you enable us to hear. You are God who speaks, and you are God who hears. We speak, and we also hear. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for the Word of God and the living Word of God, the Lord Jesus. So give us ears to hear today. Open up our hearts and take away the rocks of anger and pride and rebellion and take away the thorns of worries and uh, the love of riches. And we pray that, that we might be a people where you grow gospel fruits in our hearts and in our lives so that we might bear fruit continually. And we think of the fruit of the Spirit and we, we pray that in our hearts, and lives you may grow uh, love and, and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Help us to love these fruits and may we grow this fruit uh, in our lives. Today as well, we pray that you'll help us to be people who love the truth of the gospel, that we'll love sound doctrine, uh, that... When we hear your word, there's a delight, a sheer delight in our hearts, not an awful dread. And we pray that you'll help us to delight in you, Lord Jesus. Help us to be active in faith and to give you glory by how we live and by what we believe. We ask for your help, all of this, uh, with the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to read from uh, Mark chapter 4. <coughs> Familiar uh, parable of uh, the kingdom, um, well known and well loved, sometimes misunderstood, but we're hopefully, we'll study together and see what God has to teach us. <coughs> this is the word of God, Mark 4 and verse 1. Again, Jesus began to teach them by the lake. The crowd that gathered round him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables. And then his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. Then Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables 
so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the seed. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop 30, 60, or even 100 times what was sown. We thank God there for his word and pray that uh, we'll be blessed as we seek to understand it. Now, the choir are going to bring two pieces, uh, I think entitled Bring Praises, and You Are Unchanging.
Right, boys and girls, if you want to come up to and sit over here. Do you want to move over? Yes, good, thanks. Anybody else want to come up to the front? Because I have something to show you, and I think you need to be at the front. Can, does anybody know what I've got with me today? Somebody said Chinese. Uh, at, um, do you want to go and sit in the second? Do you want to go and sit in the second row there? You least your nation. So, what have we got here in this, in this Chinese tub? I'm trying to stop eating Chinese because apparently it's not supposed to be good. No Chinese restaurant operators here, no. That's a great sound, isn't there? Do you want to sit down, boys? Have we got room? Come on, come on, one round. You two, one round here. Come on. Let's we'll get you in here. This Excellent. Can we get room in there? Good boys. Okay, so what have we got here? So let me see what we've got here. It's not, it's not diff Is it difficult? Have you not seen any of this stuff around? I've seen oil. What? Soil. Yes, we've, we've, got a, we've got a wee container of soil. Okay, so we've got that. And then we've got... What have we got here? Seed. 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 I'm not sure what the seed is. Um, I'm sure we've... Any experts? Where's the experts here? Any experts? What seed, what seed have we got here? Now, you see if he knows what he's talking about here. What seed have we got there? Wheat. Wheat? So, I, that's what I do. Oh, two different things? Oh, right, okay. It wasn't supposed to be two different things. Um, uh, wheat and barley, but anyway, it's kind of stuff that we eat, isn't that right? Good man. Do you want, do you want to grind? Okay, get another wee one in there. Yeah. Come on, you in there. Get a wee seat in there. There's so many keys sitting there, by the way, too, just in case anyway, he loses that. Yeah. So, so we've got seeds, and then we've got the kind of like the fruit of the seed. So the, so the little seed, would you believe it, starts off, I need more hands here. So a, a seed goes, starts off like that there and ends up like something like this. Isn't that amazing? It's not a miracle how that happens. So where do we put the seed so that we can get this here? So where, where do we put the seed? On the grass. On the grass, yeah, okay. Or, or where else maybe? In the soil. Okay, so let, let me go back here to this. Here, I'm going to keep a couple here. So we've got the soil here. Eh, what you do is you put a little bit, a little seed, a little seed into the soil. Right, there's one. Maybe we'll be put in. We'll put in five. We'll put in five. There's number two. You're getting excited, I know. <laughs> Number three. Okay. Number four. And number five. And if you waited long enough, we'll put some fertilizer on that and some water, eventually, guess what happens? Oh, I just spilled a few. Guess what happens? It ends up like, like well, it's like a flower, isn't it? Yes, it's like a flower, isn't it? But it's got all these different seeds in it, and this seed's taken away, or this fruit's taken away and made into bread for us to eat. Well, now, Jesus told a story, and he said, every time you hear the gospel, every time you hear the truth of, of Jesus, my truth, it's like a little seed is sown in your heart, because this soil is like your heart. Okay, so every time you hear a message about Jesus or truth about Jesus, it's like a little seed sown in your heart. So, hands up who's been in Sunday school this morning. Yeah, most of you have been in Sunday school. So, there's one seed. Okay, there's one seed. And then, uh, you're listening to this we children's talk now. There's another seed. Are some of you going out to children's church? Yeah. There's another seed. Some of you are saying in church. There's another seed. And once we get them all in, cover them up. You see that? We're com covering up. It's like our hearts, all the seed is sown in our hearts, and God wants there to be fruit. He wants there to be fruit coming from that, so that we listen to Jesus, we understand Jesus, we know him as our savior and our friend, and then we follow him all our lives. Jesus wants to see fruit for all the seed that he's sown. So you should be very thankful and say, Jesus, thank you for telling me truth. Thank you for telling me the gospel. Thank you for telling me the word. 
and help me to obey you and to live for you from now on. So our hearts are like soil and the seed is like the good news of Jesus. Now here's another thing we could do. Say if we covered over this, right, put the lid back on again. And we try to get the the seed into it now, what would happen? What would happen? It wouldn't go in. So look, will we try? Will, will we try? Okay. You, you sure it's not going to go in? Okay. Let's try. What happens? Oh, you're right. Can't go in. And you know what Jesus says? That something would come along and eat that. Do you remember what it was from the reading? What came along and would eat, eat that? The birds of the air. That's right. This is like a hard path. If, if, you, if you don't have a heart that's open to the truth, Satan will come and steal away the good news, steal away the truth. And so we've got to have good soil, good hearts, and we've got to hear the good news, and we've got to take the good news into our hearts, and then we produce the fruit of living for him and obeying him. That's, that's why we come to church. That's why we've got a Sunday school lessons. That, that's why we read our Bibles at home as families. Because we want to hear the truth of God, and we want to, the truth to go into our hearts and to produce a harvest. So, can I pray for you that, that God will help you understand these things, and that your hearts will be open to receiving your truth? Let, let, let me pray. Lord, we're very thankful that you've given us the truth of Jesus, and we pray that these young folks here at the front, these boys and girls, will have hearts that are open to hear your truth. And that we pray that you'll help them to believe you and to receive salvation and to grow in knowledge and experience of God. Bless them, we pray. May your hand be upon them and keep them close to yourself. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Right, well, we're going to sing um, your song now, which I need to get up to see my notes here, and it's uh, We Plough the Fields.
We'll worship God now with our offering. Uh, I'm sure you, or maybe you haven't heard that uh, Jeff gone got a call uh, from um, Valley Albany and Glennon in County Monaghan. So um, he'll be with you tonight. So I'll just I'm giving you the upfront news. Um, as we've been thinking, Jeff came and now he's gone. You know, um, <laughs> do you get that? Yeah, yeah. That's an old one, but the best, the old ones are the best. But listen, that's a new exciting ministry for him, as it is for uh, Andrew. Uh, so let's pray for uh, these two men as they, in a sense, begin new ministries in the next couple of months. Father, as today as we think about um, the parable of the sower, we see much about sowing, and we hear much about receiving the seed that is sown. And we pray for these two men, uh, for Andrew coming to Loch Gall and Tertarhan, and for Jeff uh, going to, into County Monaghan. And we pray for these two men, uh, alongside many of their colleagues, going to different places in, 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 this, in this period that lies ahead to preach the gospel, to sow the seed. And we pray that you will take them in the power of your spirit and that you will give them your grace, you'll give them authority and power, uh, and uh, give them the ability to think and to reason uh, and to love uh, and to just to be ministers of the gospel. We thank you for here, and um, we thank you uh, for this period uh, of vacancy that we have uh, come through and survived. <laughs> We're very thankful for that. And we pray that, indeed, the best days of this congregation and also in Tartarum will be ahead, will be the next decade of ministry. Lord, come by your power, we pray, and change hearts and change families and change this whole community. We pray for a mighty move of God that the power of the seed of the word will be experienced in many, many people's lives. We also think of other churches that have been vacant, uh, perhaps longer than, than we have, um, and still have little uh, chance of, of receiving a minister. We pray 
uh, for, for them, that you will keep them patient as they wait upon you. But Lord, here in our midst, do a work, we pray. Thank you for smiling upon us. Thank you for your care and goodness to us. Thank you for your sovereign provision for us. May we return to you thanks. Bless us, Lord, now as we come to your word. Give us ears that are open and hearts that can believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you have a Bible, please open again at uh, Mark 4, uh, and we're going to look at this famous parable. I absolutely love this parable. It's probably my favorite parable because I, I think it teaches me, certainly, and I hope it's going to teach us how we can be optimistic in ministry, but also realistic, okay? Optimistic, but also realistic in ministry. And in many ways, the parable of the sower helps answer many of the questions that we can have uh, in ministry. Can I share some of those questions that I have that, that sir, disturb me a little? Well, I'm going to tell you them anyway, even if you maybe, <laughs> I'm going to tell them anyway. Okay, here's the first one. Why do some see the gospel of Jesus Christ so very clearly and many others don't? I mean, what's that all about? Why does that happen? Why does that happen? Why do some follow Jesus so passionately and others are so apathetic in the way they live for Jesus and in their commitment to his church? Here's another big one. Why do so many religious people reject the gospel? Why do so many religious people reject the gospel? Or maybe another form of that, why do so many people brought up in the covenant community of God, in other words, they're part of the church of Jesus Christ, and they end up not just rejecting the gospel, but hating it? I mean, how does that happen? Maybe can the flesh this out. Why does a young girl, a teenage girl, claims to be a Christian, decides she's bored with that, and she wants to taste the wild side of life? So she's going to reject what the Bible has to say about dating, about sex, and about relationship because she wants something else. Why does that happen? Or why does a 40-year-old man, father, a husband, professing Christian for many years, has no hunger for the Word of God, no hunger for maturity in faith, no desire to serve, hasn't moved on a step in the last 20 years in his faith. Why does that happen? Or how can a 45-year-old Christian man come home to his wife one day and say, listen, I'm bored with you. I don't want to be married to you anymore. I'm leaving. Why is it when the first difficulty that comes into somebody's health or into a marriage or in, into the family unit, when that first difficulty comes along, it has such immediate, dire, negative spiritual consequences. Why does it happen? Why is it that idols of money or sport or success or business become so important in setting the agenda for people's lives and their, the, the, the life of the family. What, 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 what's gone wrong there when there's not the gospel setting the agenda, it's basically anything else and everything else? How does that happen? Well, the answer, my friends, is in this parable and in the teaching of Jesus through this parable. Now, you might say that's pretty negative, all that stuff you've mentioned. Well, well let's be positive because also that this parable teaches about the positive things that can happen. So a five-year-old child comes and says, I've asked Jesus to save me from my sins. How does that happen? How does that happen? Or um, a 16-year-old says, you know what? I'm, I'm starting to get serious about my faith. Give me, give me a book on theology. Give, give, give me a book on doctrine. Why is it that in recent years, within Presbyterianism, certainly, and other places too, there's a, 
uh, resurgent in the interest of the Puritans. Once laughed, you know, and rejected and ignored. Why are the Puritans being read now like never before? Or here's another. Why would a couple tithe their income to the church when they could spend their money on other things? Or why would people seek to forgive one another and reconcile in fragile situations and hurtful relationships? How is it that some are set free from addictions and are, thrive in their freedom in Jesus Christ? Listen, I could go on giving you many, many more examples, couldn't I? The answer 